Dobrodošli u 72 plus emisiju koju kroz tri dana pokušavamo saznati kako jedan grad živi i koji je njegov puls. Prva epizoda Amsterdam. Jedan od najmultikulturalnijih gradova na svijetu. Glavni grad Nizozemske. 700 godina povijesti očuvano u sinergiji s modernim načinom života. Svjetski kozmopolitski grad u kojem se susreću istok i zapad, sjever i jug. Jedan od financijskih i kulturnih centara Europe. Suživot povijesne i suvremene arhitekture. Pun kontrasta, estetike i boja nasuprot sivilu koje uvjetuje priroda. I to je doista taj jedinstveni osjećaj Amsterdama koji ćete i vi, nadam se, doživjeti do kraja ove epizode. On se osjeti u zraku i hrani, čuje na ulici i u razgovoru s ljudima. Na kanalima ili u razgranatoj mreži vlakova, metroa, tramvaja, autobusa, plovidbi brodom i neizostavnoj vožnji bicikla. U emisiji 72 plus uz istraživanje gradova i njihova duha u potrezi smo i za dobrim praksama, odnosno pametnim rješenjima i idejama. Cilj širimo znanje. U Amsterdamu sam kao dobru praksu o kojoj želim saznati više odabrala jedan od zaštitnih znakova grada – bicikle. Više bicikala nego građana i četiri puta više nego automobila. Građani Amsterdama na biciklima su cijeli život. Na glavnom kolodvoru se nalazim s Marijom i Maud, kako bih više saznala o kulturološkoj i infrastrukturnoj pozadini tog fenomena. Plan se promijenio. Razlog zbog gužvi u gradu nisam uspjela unajmiti bicikl. Dok mi njenak čine doveze svoj, Maud me prevezla na tipični nizozemski način. Sada idemo brodom na sjever grada. Hi Maud. Hi. Will you tell me why everybody here cycles and rides their bikes? I will because you know everyone is cycling because it's just freedom. Dok se vozimo obalom rijeke Aj s pogledom na Amsterdam, ona mi priča o svojoj viziji. We want to change uh, cities around the world with a bicycle. Okay. So and how? So we push for more cycling uh, because we have a lot of networks like we have a bicycle mayor network. Okay. Uh, and we also have engagement programs We help uh, governments with technical assistance and research. Unatoč desetljećima građanoj infrastrukturi i činjenici da mnogi stanovnici na dnevnoj bazi voze bicikle, mnogim strancima iz svih dijelova svijeta koji žive u Amsterdamu, to nije uobičajen način prijevoza, a neki misle i da je opasno. Zbog toga organizacije poput ove rade i na integraciji svih stanovnika u amsterdamski način života obilježen biciklima. So we have a program where we help kids get on a bike at a really young age, like between two and four okay. years old. And then uh, we involve the parents as well. So what we see in here as well is like a lot of parents, they don't start cycling. But if we start with the children and we involve the parents, mm -hmm. right, then every city could uh, sort of start this cycling culture. Ta se kultura u Amsterdamu posebno gradila 50-ih, 60-ih i 70-ih godina prošlog stoljeća kada su se građani usprotivili planovima za izgradnju autocesta kroz grad. And from that moment uh, everyone said well okay let's keep the historical parts uh, like they are and let's make more space for uh, pedestrians and for cyclists mm -hmm. and that is still the way we are doing it uh, in the Pavu regio the, the region that uh, is about traffic and public transport mm -hmm. and we have a lot of uh, ambitions for uh, for the cycling U jedinom podvodnom parkingu za bicikle na svijetu o potrebnoj infrastrukturi razgovaram s Marijom pod predsjednicom gradske uprave za promet Now uh, like 35% of all the traffic here in Amsterdam and an average is on bike so 35% So in the in the center is more like 45 or 50 and in the outer uh, parts of town it's like 25 it's much or something. Okay. 
Amsterdam je gusto naseljen, a logika je sljedeća. It's much easier to make more room for, for bikes and pedestrians than to make more room for more cars. Stalno ulaganje, više od 400 km biciklističkih staza, podvodni, nadzemni, pa čak i parkinzi za bicikle na brodovima, svjedoče o tome kako se ovaj fenomen desetljećima održava u Amsterdamu. A posljednjih više od 100 godina u srcu De Pajpa, jednog od najživahnijih kvartova, je mjesto koje odlično opisuje nizozemska riječ Hazeleh, što znači ugodna, zabavna i lijepa atmosfera kojoj svi doprinose. Nalazimo se na Albert Kajp Marktu, najpopularniji u otvorenoj tržnici u Amsterdamu. Ovdje možete kupiti od bicikala i opreme za bicikle, jesti hranu iz cijelog svijeta, možete kupiti i odjeću i svakakve druge sitnice koje možda nećete naći na drugim mjestima. I say to everybody welcome in Amsterdam and welcome on the market. This is the Albert Kaip Street Market. Tržnicu godišnje posjeti 7 milijuna ljudi. Floris ih dočekuje šest dana u tjednu od kad je preuzeo obiteljski posao i nastavio tradiciju. And when you look at the picture here, you see it's my grandfather and my grand grandfather. Floris ističe da prodaju sireve pravih farmera. We try to support the local farmer. Okay. And I have delicious cheese for you. And what did you prepare? I have this one is the most famous. It's a vintage old goat cheese. Mm, Two okay. years old. Probali smo mnoge vrste sireva po kojima su Amsterdam i Nizozemska nadaleko poznati. Very good people. Oh, very good. And I like it with this the combination. The one you said is best, it's best. Možda ste ga probali, ali niste znali da se ovaj slatkiš zove strop waffle. Za razliku od onih u dućanima, ovaj gospodin izrađuje ga ručno. What do you suggest we have? There's two options, okay. but both are excellent. You can choose the classic one okay. or half classic, half chocolate. Oh, but then this way we get to try both options. It's a family tradition. It's a oh. family recipe. So it's a family recipe yes. for the... Okay. That's why many people come here, because it's our, it's our national cookie, our national thing. But it's difficult to find an original one, because yeah. almost everybody makes it from a factory mix. Okay. You can buy it in the store too. Obišli smo cijelu tržnicu i nismo našli tipičan amsterdamski snack, odnosno bitter balen. Rekli su nam da potražimo u obližnjem pubu, pa to sad idemo i uraditi. Ako jedete meso, uživat ćete u okusu ovih okruglica. Put nas je odveo u kineski distrikt u centru, odmah pored čuvenog red light distrikta. Ulične table su dvojezične. Kinezi u Amsterdam dolaze posljednjih 100 godina. Sa sobom su donijeli tradicionalne recepte. U jednom takvom restoranu dočekala nas je menadžerica Jing Hong. Za razliku od standardnih jelovnika takvih restorana, za nas je s kolegama priredila halal meni. Ok, so this is it. Yeah, which one you want to start first? Well, I don't know, there's just so many. First, let's start with the meat, because the... This is we freshly cut it and if it stays too long it's gonna uh, melt it and won't be delicious. Koncept hot pota je takav da osoba sama bira koje će namirnice kuhati i kombinirati s umacima. Među sastojcima smo naišli i na nešto nepoznato. What is this? Baby Bam bamboo. bamboo. Baby bamboo. Yeah. Have you seen bamboo before? I've seen the The, the big the, one, the big one, the proper trees, yeah. Uh -huh. And I've seen like furniture made of it, <laughs> but I've never, I never ate it, so this is new. Yeah, it's a very hot fiber feeling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and let's try this. This is the shrimp paste. We use this spoon. I always take some water with it, then the the it's meat one. To... Yes, ah, yes. Okay. See? Oops. Okay. This is one of our main form, I uh, say, getting out th this cuisine. And we didn't find anything similar here. So that's why like more and more people ask for and we also can do by you know, by ourselves in our home, but we don't have a proper place to to, to, to eat. 
Na početku je koncept ovog jela bio problem za domaće stanovništvo. This is very new for the local and also the idea like I pay for the restaurant but I'm still gonna cook by myself. Yeah, I was like, about to say, I was yeah, about to yeah. say. You also, but you also cook, so that's a bit, you know, it's a special experience. This is half, you like would say half half. Amsterdamci su na kraju prihvatili hot pot, a onima koji vuku porijeklo iz Kine, on pruža dah domovine. I would say this is still very authentic um, Asian vibe here. What is this? And uh, this is the the fried um, the fried uh, tofu rolls. Oh, this one quick. is one of my favorites. You you, okay. uh, you you can you can choose, pick one and put it here. I will I will explain. Because these fried things were melted in the soup. You can touch. See you see how soft this become, and now this means it's done. Yeah. This is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Can you have one as well now? Okay, yeah. Na trgu Waterloo u centru grada probali smo još jedan specialitet koji potječe daleko od Amsterdama, ali čiji je vlasnik jedan od mnogih stranaca koji su život izgradili tu i utkali svoj identitet u identitet grada. That was long time, 1989. 1989, so that's... Wow, you have a whole life here. A whole life. I came here, um, I was 26. Now I'm 58. Mađdijev put do Amsterdama počeo je u rodnom Jordanu, preko Južne Amerike i konačno SAD-a. Ja, I met my wife in San Francisco. She's Dutch American and that's why I came here. My my specialty actually is the falafel wrap. Okay, should we try the falafel wrap then? We do one falafel wrap for... Po dolazku u Amsterdam bio glavni kuhar za halal odjel svih islamskih aviokompanija u zračnoj luci Skip Hall. Radio je kao kuhar za kraljevsku obitelj i konačno je 2014. otvorio ovaj štand. It is more happy that I can talk to people, you know. Before it was more official, more behind backstage, working in the kitchens. Now it's life. With my baba ganoush on the top. Mm. Oh, this is how it should be. I love Baba Ganoš. Amsterdam koju poznajemo danas grad je u kojoj posljednjih 500 godina ljudi donose nove ideje iz cijelog svijeta. Posljednjih 400 na mjestu gdje vas vodimo brusila se jedna cijela priča. Naša domaćica Mirjam kaže, za rezače dijamanata najbolje je dnevno svjetlo. Daylight is the best light for a diamond cutter and a diamond grader. So that's why they needed the optimal light coming into the buildings. That's why there are so many lights. Zgrada sama pripovjeda priču o Amsterdamu. And this used to be a diamond steam cutting factory. Židovi koji su bježali iz Španjolske u vrijeme inkvizicije dolaze ovdje. Pokreću obradu dijamanata i postižu veliki uspjeh kroz nadolazeće godine i desetljeća. Priča se naglo zaustavlja tektonskim promjenama koje je donio drugi svjetski rat i pogibijom velikog broja članova ove i drugih obitelji koje su se ovdje bavile obradom dijamanata. Was actually completely made here in Amsterdam, so okay. I think we have to talk about the Amsterdam cut. But worldwide, everybody talks about the brilliant cut. A mnogo godina poslije ovdje osmišljen novi način brušenja dijamanata. We pimped up the Amsterdam cut. Okay. So now we have a, a round shape with 121 facets. Also, you know, this is. Plastic, you see a big difference in shine. Miriam me upoznaje s rezačima dijamanata. Sada ćemo vidjeti kako izgleda proces. This is how we find it. Oh, this is also very helpful for when when I find them when I'm traveling. That's why this is what I'm looking for. Thank you so much. What they use? They have here cast iron wheels. Cast iron is porous. Okay. The porosity makes sure that you can put diamond dust in it. Okay. And with a little bit of olive oil, they managed to 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 make uh, the facets. Za izradu ovakvog dijamanta potrebno je mnogo strpljenja i vremena. Ovi koje smo gledali kako se bruse još nisu gotovi. In, uh, what is this? These are the diamonds. They, they arrived. Come, okay. They come by tube system. 
ipak Mirjam se potrudila da na kraju vidim konačni proizvod. A jedan od nezaobilaznih amsterdamskih dijamanata su i kanali, pod zaštitom UNESCO-a od 2010. kao primjer gradskog planiranja. It's a great story actually and it also tells a story about the history of Amsterdam, uh, how the city rapidly grew in the 15th and 16th century uh, and that the canals and the city planning uh, played an important part in the, uh, in the growth of Amsterdam but also in the success. In the 16th, 17th and 18th century uh, the city uh, grew so rapidly that uh, people were dumping waste in the uh, canals. Problem je na kraju riješen u 19. stoljeću, ali u priči o kanalima prisutni su usponi, padovi i stalni rad. Primijetili smo da su mnogi kanali pod rekonstrukcijom. It's not sinking, but it's crumbling. You know, these um, uh, the canal walls need to be refurbished, actually. Mm -hmm. But somehow we waited too long for it, uh, so we ignored it a little bit. But uh, the last few years there uh, were some uh, crumbling canals and some sinkholes, um, so that um, yeah, made it necessary to do uh, some rapid repair. Bez toga ne bi bilo života na kanalima. Jackson A, Rachelier's Eight, Prinzen up. Ovo je Mark, kapetan broda i vodič kroz kanale. It's a very international city that has 180 nationalities living here apparently, which is less than a million people in the city. So it's a really diverse. They call it the global village. Mark je u Amsterdam stigao iz Sjeverne Irske 2008 zbog ljubavi i tadašnjeg posla. It didn't work out. So I came for a job and a girl and I have neither still. 165 kanala prostire se na 75 km u cijelom gradu. Na kanalima se živi, plovi, jede i pije. Oni su sastavni dio prometa i života u Amsterdamu. 60-ih i 70-ih godina kao jedno od rješenja za porast potražnje za stanovima ponudili su se plutajući domovi na kanalu. You pulled up a little boat, they just let you live for free around here. Uh, these days, though, it's a very middle class way to live in the city, and some of them are quite, I mean, the spots that you park the boats in can get up to half a million. So these guys actually uh, deliberately built that little garden there so they could actually have it for the waterfowl and the birds to nest in. Do you have fun in this job, yeah? Yeah, it's pretty good fun, except in December when it's minus 15 Celsius and it's pissing down with rain, it's not so great. But there's a sign up here which says no entry. I have to double check this one. Because of King's Day later on, it's, uh, it's going to be some closures on the canals. Maybe we should be fine. And this is a lovely canal down here, by the way. This is the one with all the bridges lined up. It's called the uh, yes, the Reguliersgracht in the beautiful Dutch language. And we say canal of the seven bridges in English. Mark Godina Maradi kao turistički vodič. Priča nam o fenomenu droge u ovom gradu. 1980s, real issue with uh, heroin in the city. Like 10,000 addicts, which in a city this small was a huge problem. Nakon te epizode, poznate kao heroinska kriza, donesene su neke promjene. So that's when the Dutch famously made their drug policy, which was separating hard drugs from soft drugs. Na vladinim stranicama stoji da je u Nizozemskoj protivno zakonu posjedovati, prodavati i proizvoditi droge, ali da država tolerira prodaju lakih droga, odnosno marihuane, u posebnim lokalima u kojima je dozvoljena konzumacija i kupovina. Isto tako država ne goni građane za posjed ili korištenje manjih količina. It's just a law they've been ignoring, essentially. So that's why they're called coffee shops, not weed wonderlands. Zbog toga se kroz godine Amsterdam profilirao kao glavno odredište kad je riječ o marihuani. Međutim, u gradu su sve glasni pozivi da se takozvana politika tolerancije promijeni. Smatraju da je imidž grada spao na priču o alkoholu i drogi. Gradonačelnica koja se za to bori smatra da se samo takvim politikama mogu smanjiti sektor lakih droga i riješiti problem koji stvaraju rijeke turista koje ovdje dolaze zbog tog jednog razloga. Ali to je samo prvi jer Amsterdam nudi mnogo više. To najbolje znaju strani studenti koji svake godine u sve većem broju iz cijelog svijeta dolaze zbog kvalitete obrazovanja i načina života. Da, baš se možeš razviti ovdje ko osoba i što se tiče poslova i što se tiče nekih internships možda. E, tako da definitivno mislim da to što studiramo vani je veliki plus 
kada u nekom trenutku krenemo raditi u našem području. Definitivno bih rekao da ima dosta prilika za networking, za upoznavanje novih drugih ljudi iz poslovnog svijeta, iz različitih industrija, a pogotovo kad dodate i ovaj dio drugačijih kultura i drugačijih profila osoba, to vas oblikuje kao ličnost i to vam doprinosi na kraju i vašem profesionalnom angažmanu. Jordan, čuveni pitoreskni kvart u centru grada. Tu se nalazim s Belindom iz Njemačke i Šonom iz Škotske, koje su nakon studija ostale živjeti i raditi u Nizozemskoj. And how long have you guys been expats here? And wait, let, should we cross here? Exactly, but be careful with the bike. Okay. Yes, you were saying. Yes, so um, I've been here for five years at this point. Okay. So quite a long time. And I'm definitely really enjoying it. I don't think I want to move anywhere else. I mean, look around. It looks like a history book come to life. Okay. And you, Shana, what do you like about your life in the Netherlands? The quality of life here is very good. Okay. It's good work-life balance. There's lots of different people from all over the world. True. Nice I can. Well, we, we, we saw that, so I can understand why that's the case. But Jordan is also famous for uh, one specific place, and I think we should show you what we can eat there. Oh, okay. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yes, let's go. So what are we having? So we're having apple pies, because apple pies are a famous food in the Netherlands, and this is the best apple pie in town. Cool. What does that mean? Yeah. Okay. Dobar tek. Amsterdam je grad muzeja. Budući da bi nam za obilazak monumentalnih muzeja i njihovog vrijednog sadržaja trebalo mnogo vremena, odlučili smo se za Fabrique de Lumière, u kojem se radovi velikih umjetnika oživljavaju kroz lude svjetlosne projekcije. Nas je zatekao performans arhitekta Gaudija i slikara Dalija, dvojce možda najpoznatijih katalonaca. Pripreme noć ranije za najveću zabavu u Amsterdamu. A za kraj, dan u godini kada stanovnici ovog grada zajedno slave. Povod, kraljev dan. U 72 sata uspjeli smo doživjeti Amsterdam kroz dobru hranu, 
kaos prometa i mir vožnje kanalima. Saznali smo i nešto više o dobrim praksama kad su u pitanju bicikli. Upoznali razne ljude, vidjeli nezaobilazne znamenitosti, otkrili neke manje poznate činjenice i doživjeli sjajnu atmosferu. Epizodu smo započeli na suncu, a završavamo na kiši, što je sasvim normalno jer u jednom danu možete doživjeti i više godišnjih doba. Ja sam Hana Nanić. Vidimo se u idućem gradu.